Chapter 52 of Women of History This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Women of History by Anonymous Chapter 52 Lady Masham 1658 Ballard Damaris, Lady Masham, the daughter of the famous Dr. Cudworth, and second wife of Sir Thomas Masham of Oates, in Essex, was born in 1658. Her father, who soon perceived the bent of her genius, took particular care in her tuition, and she applied herself with great diligence to the study of divinity and philosophy, under the direction of the celebrated Mr. Locke, who was a domestic in her family for many years, and at length died in her house at Oates. Soon after she was married, the fame of her learning, piety, and ingenuity induced the celebrated Mr. Norris to address and inscribe to her, by way of letter, his reflections upon the conduct of human life. This began a friendship between them, which, having its foundation in religion, seemed very likely to be firm and lasting, but it seems to have been in a great measure dissolved before it had been of any long continuance, occasioned by this lady's contracting an indissoluble friendship with Mr. Locke, whose divinity and philosophy is well known to have differed from that of Mr. Norris. Not long after, the latter, in certain published letters, maintained the proposition that mankind are obliged strictly as their duty to love with desire nothing but God only, and Lady Masham published without her name her discourse concerning the love of God, wherein she applied herself to the examination of Mr. Norris's scheme, which included the proposition that every degree of love of any creature is sinful a proposition defended by him on the ground borrowed from father malbranche that god not the creature is the efficient cause of our sensations mrs masham examined this hypothesis with great accuracy and ingenuity and represented in a strong light the evil consequences resulting from it about the year seventeen hundred lady masham also wrote a treatise occasional thoughts in reference to a virtuous and Christian life. The principal design of which was to improve religion and virtue, and indeed it is so full of excellent instruction that, if carefully perused by both sexes, it could not fail of obtaining much of its desired end. She complains much of the too great neglect of religious duties, occasioned, as she believed, by the want of being better acquainted with the fundamentals of religion, and very justly reprehends and reproaches persons of quality for so scandalously permitting their daughters to pass that part of their youth, in which the mind is most ductile and susceptible of good impressions in a ridiculous circle of diversions, which is generally thought that the proper business of young ladies, and which so generally engrosses them, that they can find no spare hours wherein to make any improvement in their understandings. As Mrs. Masham owed much to the care of Mr. Locke for her acquired endowments and skill in arithmetic, geography, chronology, history, philosophy, and divinity, so, as he was a domestic in her family, she returned the obligation with singular benevolence and gratitude, always treating him with the utmost generosity, her friendship for him being inviolable. It is recorded that, as she sat by Mr. Locke's side the night before he died, he exhorted her to regard this world only as a state of preparation for a better, that she desired to sit up with him that night, but he would not permit her. The next day, as she was reading the Psalms in a low tone by him in his room, he desired her to read aloud. She did so, and he appeared very attentive till the approach of death prevented him. He then desired her ladyship to break off, and in a few minutes afterwards expired. As a testimony of her gratitude to Mr. Locke's memory, she drew up that account of him which is printed in the Great Historical Dictionary. End of chapter 52